Welcome again, everybody. Um, good morning. For me, it's a pleasure to introduce you, Lijie Sun. She she's from uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology. Yeah, yeah. She has recently gets his PhD at Tohoku University. Yeah. He she works uh, on hyperbolic trend, uh, complex hyperbolic trend groups. And uh, today he's going to delight us with a beautiful lecture. Yeah. Thank you for the introduction. Also, thank, um, I would like to thank uh, Hel for giving me this invaluable chance to uh, speak here. And uh, today I would like to talk about this clearness of complex hyperbolic triangle groups. And uh, this is the outline of my talk. Firstly, we will introduce, I will give some introduction about cleaning, I mean, real hyperbolic space, and then we get into the complex hyperbolic space. Uh, we will give some uh, definition about the complex hyperbolic space, complex geodesic, and the complex hyperbolic isometries. And then we began to talk about the complex hyperbolic triangle groups. The first one, uh, the first step, we will talk about the complex hyperbolic triangle groups with two-fold symmetry. Uh, later, I will give the uh, the reason why we call it two-fold symmetry. And then. Last, we will talk about the complex hyperbolic ultra ideal channel groups. In this part, we will uh, mainly use these two methods Klein Maskey's combination theorem and the Poincare's polar hydrogen theorem. They are the uh, forming complex hyperbolic space. Uh, so, let me start with some basic knowledge about the real hyperbolic space. Uh, firstly, we know that maybe uh, yeah, as we all know, rank one symmetric species of non-compact non type. It contains this four type: real hyperbolic space, complex hyperbolic space, quaternionic hyperbolic space, with Cayley hyperbolic plane, octonian hyperbolic space. And uh, uh, the complex hyperbolic one space, we can identify it with the unit ball with Poincaré metric, which is a model of real hyperbolic plane. Therefore, it's natural for us to consider the complex hyperbolic two space, uh, which is a generalization of real hyperbolic two space. But we should note that there's, there are many uh, similarities between these two, uh, I mean, complex hyperbolic space and real hyperbolic space. But uh, it's also, I mean, uh, we cannot uh, generalize some formalism and uh, results from real hyperbolic space to the complex hyperbolic space very directly. Uh, later, I will, you will see the comparing with this part, with the later part about the complex hyperbolic space, you will see the similarities and the differences. Uh, so let me start with some basic things. Uh, firstly, we see this unit ball model of real hyperbolic three space. <coughs> we want to uh, consider the um, is orientation isometry, orientation preserving isometry of so this unitable model. And uh, look at this special linear two group, two, uh, two by two complex matrices. And uh, we know it acts uh, uh, linearly on the, com on the complex two space. And uh, therefore, it's, I mean, acts on the projective, projective. Uh, Projective uh, complex line PC1, which is homeomorphic to the Riemann sphere S2. And the induced uh, action of, of this, uh, of the element of SL2C, is via the Mobius transformation, which maps Z to Az plus B over Cz plus D. And, but we, know, uh, we should know that uh, um, two matrices in, from SL2C. To, uh, corris uh, corresponds to the same Mobius transformation if and only if it differs by multiplication by identity and uh, mi minus identity. So we take the quotient, uh, quotient group of a special linear group with, the identity, uh, res with respect to the identity and the minus identity. We get the projective special linear group, <coughs> which, is, which can be identified as a Mobius transformation M. Also, is isomorphic, isomorphic to the <coughs> um, orientation preserving uh, real hyperbolic three space. And we know that uh, on the 
orientation preserving isometric uh, groups. It acts on the Lehman sphere as conformal, uh, conformal homeomorphisms of Lehman sphere. So uh, we can now we can see that the com com conformal flat structure can be modeled into the uh, boundary of the real hyperbolic space. But in the later, if, if we uh, get into the complex hyperbolic space, um, the, uh, the holomorphic isometrical group PU to one will, uh, I mean, act on the boundary Heisenberg, Heisenberg group. I mean, it has <laughs> CR structure, I mean, CR structure can be modeled into the boundary of the complex hyperbolic space. And um, <coughs> this is some basic uh, things of real hyperbolic space. And uh, uh, now I would like to introduce a, a theorem given by Gurley and Martin. Um, they investigate uh, the sufficient condition for this coordinates of a two gendered subgroup. And uh, if we see, uh, I mean, this sufficient condition is given by the order of two uh, elliptic elements. And uh, if the distance between the two axes of FG satisfies this uh, condition, then we can get uh, the two gender subgroup will be discrete. And uh, in this theorem, the authors mainly use the Klein's combination theorem. Later, if we, uh, when we consider the um, complex hyperbolic triangle group, we will also use the sim similar method. In, that means Klein, com Klein's combination theorem in complex hyperbolic space. And uh, we know that if a group is discrete, we can construct a fundamental domain for this discrete, sub for this discrete group. And, uh, now we give the definition about the um, fundamental domain. A fundamental domain, uh, it should satisfy two conditions. First one, for any two distinct, uh, for any two distinct elements of this group, the intersection of uh, the image and the action of uh, these two elements should not be uh, intersect. And uh, the second one is that the uh, Clola of this fundamental domain uh, will, I mean, we take the union of the image of the Clola of this fundamental domain, it will tessellate all the real hyperbolic space. And then similarly, we can change this complex, uh, this real hyperbolic space to the complex hyperbolic space. And now we give a very simple example about uh, this cyclic group, it gener generated by a parabolic element. And then we see that this shaded part indicates the fundamental domain of this cyclic group. It's very easy to see this kind of thing. And uh, um, before I uh, give some results about the complex hyperbolic triangle group, I want to say, uh, introduce something about the real hyperbolic triangle group. T sub ABC is, I mean, in real hyperbolic space, T sub ABC, we denote, uh, I mean, it's, uh, Bounded by uh, ge uh, geodesics in this unit uh, disk, and uh, with this, uh, that each pair of three geodesics intersect with angles pi over a, pi over b, pi over c. Here, a, b, c are integers. We also allow the possibility of some of a, b, c are uh, is infinity. That means two geodesics will be tangent at the boundary, a symptotic uh, position. And uh, if we consider the group gener generated by the three geodesics, I mean, ge geodesics construct the com uh, hyperbolic triangle, and uh, we get a group generated by the three complex geodesics, um, and it's discrete. The each black or white we can see uh, we can be a fundamental domain of that. Uh, uh, group, but we know that uh, in real hyperbolic space, the real hyperbolic triangle group is just the uh, index two of that group generated by the three geodesics, since uh, it should be orientation preserving. So, uh, 
And the, the, this, the fundamental domain of that real hyperbolic triangle group is, uh, I mean, yeah, here I just take this T246, for example. I mean, um, the real hyperbolic triangle group and this T246, and we consider the fundamental domain, two adjacent black and white will be a fundamental domain of the real hyperbolic triangle group. This is, uh, I mean, um, very, very classical disk group in real hyperbolic space. And uh, later, we see complex hyperbolic triangle group is very different from this real hyperbolic triangle group. The obvious point, uh, obvious different difference is that the if we given three triangle, we cannot determine up to conjugation. We cannot de we cannot determine only one complex hyperbolic triangle in complex hyperbolic space. I will uh, I mean explain why later. Now we give some uh, preliminaries of complex hyperbolic space. Maybe um, people sitting here are very familiar with this part. So, but I will introduce it very simply in case someone are not so familiar with it. Um, we let this C to one denote the vector space C3 equipped with the Hermitian form of signature to one. And we have the explicit formula here. And um, it, de it decomposes the, C2, uh, the complex vector space C21 minus zero into these three parts, V minus, V plus, and V zero. We, uh, and then take the projection map from C21 to CP2. We get the projective model if we take the projection of V minus. That is to say it's, the, it's just the set of negative complex lines. I mean, this V minus. If we uh, take the set coordinate Z3 to be one, we can get the unit ball model. Also, the boundary of HC2 is just uh, the projection of uh, this non line and uh, uh, it's homeomorphic to the unit three sphere. And it, this uh, complex hyperbolic space HC2 has a very natural metric called the Burger metric. And now we just give the form in the, uh, we give the, we write it in the form of a Hermitian form. And, uh, here, this x tilde, y tilde are lives in C21. Uh, and it's easy for us to check that uh, it depends, it, uh, independent the choice of the lives, I mean, this program metric. Um, previously, we, see, we, we take the, uh, we take this uh, Hermitian form and this, uh, and the condition of this matrix and get this unitable model. If we consider other, there are many other uh, Hermitian form of signature to one. We take another one, then we get the second domain model sigma. Uh, uh, sorry, S. And uh, this, we see that this unitable model is actually analogous to the unitable model of real hyperbolic space. And this second domain model adjusts the upper half plane, I mean, analogous to the upper half plane of the real hyperbolic space. Uh, real hyperbolic space. And uh, now, we give a, a correspondence between the between the um, uh, homogeneous coordinates with the Heisenberg coordinates here, uh, and the points in the the points of the second domain model is just the C multiply uh, with the Q infinity, and um, if we consider just the C multiply, uh, we uh, either actually realizes Heisenberg group with uh, this group law. From this, we can check the inverse of, uh, inverse of KC1 V1 is just the minus KC1 minus V1. And uh, we, uh, for this second domain model, we have a very special metric, uh, second metric and uh, in, on the uh, Kalula of this second domain model. It give we write the same, I mean, the explicit formula here. And um, we uh, should note that the second, this second metric is, uh, uh, I mean, later we will consider the uh, isometric, uh, holomorphic isometric group of HC2 with respect to the Burger metric. But PU21 can, uh, element of PU21 cannot act uh, isometrically with the, uh, and the, I mean, with respect to this sigma metric, 
just like if we consider the upper half, uh, the yeah upper half space or real hyperbolic three space, the it's just the counterpart of the Euclidean metric. We know the isometric group or H H three R cannot uh, I mean <coughs> cannot necessarily act uh, isometrically with respect to the Euclidean metric. It's obvious, right? And um, but we will uh, use this symmetric to uh, give some uh, give the definition of photoisometric sphere later. So it's necessary to know the symmetry. And uh, now we introduce uh, totally geodesic two submanifolds. First one is a complex geodesic. If we consider uh, two points lying in the Kalula or HC two, we can take the complex span of the two. Uh, Standard lifts of these two points, and uh, <clears throat> if we take the projection of this complex span C tilde, we get the complex line. But complex geodesic should lie in the HC two, so we take the intersection of P uh, projective of C tilde with HC two, we get the complex geodesic. It's uh, an embedded orbit of HC one. I mean, also I mean, it just has a um, point cloud metric with constant curvature minus one. And another totally geodesic manifold, sub manifold is totally real, totally geodesic subspace. And uh, uh, here I will not <laughs> give the uh, detailed definition here, but we uh, just need to know that it's an embedded copy of real hyperbolic plane. And uh, of course, it has the uh, Klein biotrome metric with constant curvature minus one or four. This is the only two uh, kinds of war totally geodesic two manifolds in complex hyperbolic space. And we know that there are no totally geodesic real hypersurfaces in complex hyperbolic space. This is just, I mean, this is uh, increases our difficulty to, I mean, uh, construct a fundamental domain since we cannot find this very good object. I mean, um, about the complex geodesic, uh, it can be uniquely determined by a positive vector P of C to one, and uh, it's just the projection of the set of points Z satisfying the Hermitian product, the Hermitian from uh, Hermitian product of Z with the po polar positive vector P to be zero, and uh, P we call it a post polar vector, and uh, then we introduce the complex reflection in this complex geodesic C. And we um, we see uh, this. Uh, we just consider this a uh, complex line C, and uh, a complex. Uh, I mean, positive vector P. We consider uh, a point Z here. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> and Z here. We compose. We can um, represent. I mean, Z has decomposed Z into this direction and this direction, right? Uh, and the, the complex reflection, uh, this complex reflection will map Z to here. And it's easy for us to write the action of this complex reflection. And uh, now we consider uh, two, chain, two special chains in the boundary, which is just, the chain is just the boundary of uh, complex geodesic. And the uh, first one is the Z chain, it has uh, uh, this polar vector. And uh, by, com by, I mean, by computation, it's very easy to see this Z chain is a vertical chain, I mean. This is the uh, boundary of complex hyperbolic space, and the Z chain is just uh, uh, the vertical chain passes through this point. And the TR chain, it has uh, uh, this polar vector, and it's easy to um, compute, compute that this TR chain is uh, uh, the radius which has the, uh, this, um, which has uh, the center. Uh, zero T and the uh, radius uh, here. We uh, recall the Bergen metric we uh, introduced previously. It has this form and uh, 
it's very easy to see that the unit group with respect to the uh, Hermitian matrix H, uh, it acts on, it, it, it's, it uh, will keep this Burger metric invariant. And uh, we know that the unit complex multiple scalar of identity will X, uh, will map the complex line to itself. So we take the uh, quotient group of this U21 with respect to U1, we get the projective unit group, which is just the automorphism group of HC2. And uh, sometimes it's very, very uh, useful for us to consider a subgroup of U21 special unit group as U21 with determinant with uh, the determinant of element to be one, which is, uh, I mean, this SU21 is a threefold covering of P21, and it's very obvious here. And uh, also we can classify the um, automorphism group of HC2 to be this, onto, in, into these three types, elliptic, parabolic, and logstromic, uh, according to the numbers and the fixed uh, I, according to the numbers and the location of the fixed points. Also, we introduce a, 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 I mean a method given by Goldman. He uh, gave a theorem about, uh, give a theorem to, for, um, to determine the type of the element according to the trees of uh, standard, the trees of leaves of automorphism group. Automorphism group. I mean, uh, this is the discriminant function he gave, and uh, this uh, picture just depicts the level set f inverse zero of this discriminant, fun discriminant function. And A is logstromic if this Z um, lies outside of this deltoid. We, we just need not to we just need to know that uh, there is a uh, discriminant, discriminant function we can use to determine the type. Now we, I will introduce complex hyperbolic triangle groups. And the, deform, the deformation zero of this complex, uh, complex hyperbolic triangle group is given by Goldman and Parker. They investigate, uh, oh, firstly, I will give the uh, definition of the complex triangle group. It's, if we know the uh, I mean, the definition of the real hyperbolic, real hyperbolic triangle is just similar with the construction of real hyperbolic triangle. And uh, uh, the uh, Goldman and Parker, they investigated the complex hyperbolic ideal triangle group. That means that this, each pair of three complex geodesic will be asymptotic. In, that is to say tangent at the boundary. And uh, we Previously, we see that the uh, the demand, I mean, the space of a complex hyperbolic triangle is one dimension. Since it, we can see, we can consider that uh, the complex hyperbolic triangle has three vertices in C two, right? And uh, that means uh, the dimension will be, I mean, th that means there will be six real Variables, but the PU, I mean, uh, sorry, C2 and, uh, uh, sorry, we have three points here and we have C1, C2, and uh, W1, W2, U1, U2, in C2. And uh, this, we have uh, 12 real variables, but we know that the Mm, dimension of projective unit group is eight dimension, and that means we have four, vari four uh, variables now, and uh, we have the complex. I mean, we have the intersection angle power p, power q, and power r. That means we just have one real dimensional. And uh, in the complex hyperbolic triangle group, the uh, ideal triangle group, the uh, use the cut angular invariant to parameterize this complex hyperbolic ideal triangle group and uh, get the uh, results here. Gamma is discrete when the tangent value of this cut angular invariant is no smaller, no bigger than 35 and gamma is not discrete when T square is not 
no smaller than 125 or 3. But the conjecture, the conjecture that the next condition will also be sufficient. And late after, afterwards, Lehman Schwarz, he, he confirmed the conjecture and also used the, the last so-called ideal charge group. That means T square equal, is equal to 125 over 3 to construct the first complex 3 manifold with, I mean, uh, complex hyperbolic 3 manifold. Yeah. This also demonstrates the uh, importance for us to uh, this also demonstrates the study of uh, the importance of the study on complex hyperbolic triangle groups. And uh, now we uh, give the first theorem about the complex hyperbolic triangle group with two for the symmetry, and it's a joint work with John. And um, we consider two uh, also three complex reflections, R1, R2, R3, but now we uh, didn't give the, I mean, we consider the higher dimensional of uh, complex reflection. And uh, we, uh, the three complex reflection, if they satisfy these four relations, and we get this, uh, the last theorem. Firstly, I want to see, uh, see something about the complex reflection of order L. I mean, in this case, we, uh, this complex reflection, it will map P to itself, but if we consider how about uh, the like will map P to this one, and we can also write the explicit of explicit action of this complex reflection with with uh, an, uh, rotation angle theta theta. If we write twice pi over L, and then the complex reflection will be of order L, and um, this is uh, we. This theorem, I mean, if we suppose that this uh, the composition of R1, R2, and R, the three complex reflection R1, R2, R3 have finite order, um, if the triangle group generated by these three complex reflection is discrete, then uh, the real part of our trace of our, this S is one of the following values. And the aim for us to consider um, why have this condition is that if we have this, uh, I mean, consider this, uh, the, the discrete complex hyperbolic triangle group, then it could be some candidates of non-arithmetic non complex hyperbolic lattice that is the uh, aim for us to, con to consider uh, this uh, complex triangle group with two-fold symmetry. Also, two-fold symmetry, uh, the reason why we call it two-fold symmetry is that Having, that, having these four uh, conditions, we can have the um, order of R2, R3 will be R1, R3. And uh, the order of R1, R2 will be equal to the order of R2, R3, R1, R3 inverse. And if someone knows the complex hyperbolic triangle group, I mean, uh, complex reflection just in order to some authors consider the different types like uh, NN infinity, NN, uh, NN infinity chi. That means uh, we can write the representation of the triangle group in, in, in this special way. This M and N are just uh, the different. This order and uh, this order. That's the basic reason why we see is two-fold symmetry. And uh, then I want to uh, introduce something about the complex hyperbolic ultra ideal triangle group. Previously, we see complex hyperbolic triangle group is the intersection of two uh, complex dielectric will intersect in the complex hyperbolic space. If we uh, consider the the corolla of the uh, the corolla, uh, each pair of corolla of complex dielectric do not intersect in complex hyperbolic space, it will realize this complex hyperbolic ultra ideal channel group. If the complex dielectric do not intersect in the complex hyperbolic space, we can compute the distance between the complex 
Ninja, that's it. And uh, on our trader trader group is uh, what type L1, L2, S3, if the distance of each pair complex is geodesic L1, L2, S3. And uh, the first uh, um, method for us to uh, consider the discreteness of ultra delta group is Kalan Muskis combination theorem. Um, it's just similar with the uh, real hyperbolic case. And uh, the condition for, I mean, we consider two discrete subgroup and uh, uh, we want to get the, how about the uh, group generated by the, that two group. And uh, we come, we firstly, we get the uh, fundamental domains of the two group Z1, Z2, I mean fundamental domain D1, D2, and we consider the interior of the complement of this D1, D2. If D1, D2 and E1, E2 uh, satisfy this equation, uh, satisfy these conditions, then the group Z generated by Z1, Z2 will be discrete. And the D, uh, the intersection of D1, D2 will be a fundamental domain. Here we just give a very simple explanation of this uh, condition. We see that the E1 and the E1, 2 we see uh, the union of uh, these two shadow parts will, is the uh, um, interior complement of D1. And the E21 and E22, <coughs> the union of this, the, this two part is uh, the com interior complement of D2. Then this kind of D1, D2, E1, E2 satisfy these conditions. It's a very simple example of these conditions. And um, now we consider a special uh, type of uh, ultra ideal channel group. Isosceles ultra ideal channel group means for that three uh, complex geodesic, um, there exists two distance sign, just equal. And um, uh, we assume that the, there are three chains, uh, respectively R e to the I theta chain and X y chain and minus X y chain. Previously, we uh, introduced that, that uh, uh, three of chain and you can draw it like in this way. And uh, we suppose that the R is smaller than the observatory value Y. Then the triangle group generated by I2, I1, I2, I3 in the three complex chains, these three complex chains will be discrete if X, Y, R satisfy one of the following conditions. And uh, now I will give a very, uh, I mean, the sketch of the proof of this theorem. We compute the firstly we compute the three uh, the three distance between each pair of complex geodesics and it shows that uh, um, yeah isosceles ultra ideal shadow group and that's the that's the reason why we uh, assume that this one since it needs to be bigger than zero and uh, then we consider the foot domain of cyclic group. Uh, of PU21, which do not in the fi fix at the uh, point at infinity. And uh, it's just the intersection of uh, all exterior of photo isometric sphere, taking, by taking over, I mean, here, by taking over all chi of, of in, I mean, uh, all non zero integers chi. And uh, this exterior of uh, isometric sphere we write it here. Actually, uh, it's just the exterior of the photoisometric sphere. And uh, if we take uh, it's this uh, to be equality, then it uh, realizes the photoisometric sphere. And uh, we use a proposition given by John Parker. Uh, he gives the explicit, explicit radius and the center of uh, the photoisometric sphere of one element of PU21, which doesn't fix the point at infinity. And uh, in the symmetric way. I mean, then we consider the uh, three, foot isom three foot domain of the three cyclic group I1, I2, I1, I3, I2, I3. And uh, we consider the interior of uh, the, the complement of 
the foot foot domain of these three cyclic cyclic group, then it shows that uh, um, yeah we can we can prove that uh, the interior of the foot uh, the interior of foot fundamental domain for this cyclic group is included by one one like ball, but this ball is in the meaning of sigmetric way. This is the center and this is the radius. Now we can use the uh, Kahn-Lenz combination theorem. I mean, by uh, I mean, separate the interior of the complementary or two uh, complementary or fundamental domains of two cyclic groups, and uh, then we get these <laughs> two conditions. And um, uh, yeah, this one. Uh, Theorem about the discreteness uh, of our trial channel group, and the, the second method for us to consider the discreteness of our trial channel group is using the Poincaré's polarization theorem. Now, uh, this is a Poincaré's polarization theorem, and it's very similar with the real hybrid case. And uh, um, I, the first time I, uh, I mean, the actually I. Encountered this Poincaré's polarization theorem in HC2 in one paper written by Gusevitsky and Parker, named the representation of free function group in complex symbolic space. They, um, in, in that paper, and uh, I use it to consider the the discrepancy or triangle group. And uh, this is a statement. The first, I mean, Poincaré's polarization theorem just gives the uh, um, geometry condition for the for, the, for, uh, for a polyhedron with spherical size, so that the group generated by the elements which permutes the size is discrete, and it should satisfy these following four conditions. First one is that for each side A of the polyhedron, we have there exists another side A prime and uh, an element of P to one Z A such that uh, Z sub A maps A to A prime. Also, uh, the Z A Z sub A prime is just the inverse of Z A. And uh, then for any two sides of uh, this fundamental uh, this polarization, either the disjoint or the tangent at the boundary. And uh, uh, yeah, the, the um, third condition is that uh, we consider the intersection of this polarization D with the the image of D and the action of uh, side the pairing transformation. It will it should be disjoint. And the fourth condition says that uh, the induced metric on the color of this polarization D modulo the um, phi the Finite set consisting of the side pairing transformation is uh, complete, and uh, I just prove it. I mean, we can prove it in the uh, following the way in real hybrid case. It will show it indeed. I mean, um, it works in this complex hybrid case. And now we uh, consider the uh, consider the complex hybrid ultra ideal channel group. Uh, we see it previously that the isosceles ideal channel group generated by three uh, complex geodesics with this three chain. And we consider the polar region D, uh, which is uh, the intersection, yeah, which is the intersection of three equidistant high half space. I didn't introduce this half space, but I mean, it's just the uh, yeah, I write it in the explicit form, and uh, it's just the set of points uh, satisfying this condition. Since we have this, we have three uh, complex geodesics, and we we now just consider three equidistant half space h1, h2, h3, and uh, we denote the bisector by b sub i, which is the boundary of this the three uh, equidistant half space. And uh, the co-dimensional one phase 
which is uh, the intersection of the bisector with the boundary of polyhedron is called the side of D. Then we use the previous Poincaré's polyhedron theorem. And we, uh, first, firstly, we want to construct the, uh, this uh, polyhedron, we should choose a base point. And uh, now we just choose the center of the unit ball in complex symbolic space, unit ball model. If this uh, half space i, j with base point z0, it, uh, we can also write the explicit form. But we know that if we consider, we, I mean, the important part for us to consider the point class polyhedron theorem is we need to check out the um, position, uh, position of the side. So that means the position of the bisectors. We know bisector is three-dimensional, but it's uh, bisector is three-dimensional. <laughs> and it's very difficult for us to consider um, the three-dimensional uh, three objects, whether they intersect or not. I mean, in this, uh, in this uh, bisector <laughs> form. And uh, we just uh, uh, projected to a uh, real, I mean, uh, projected to a uh, hyper, I mean, uh, two dimensional plane. And uh, then we consider uh, whether it intersects by varying the, I mean, the varying the force, force variables. I mean, um, Actually, I tried to uh, try to give the rigorous proof whether the I mean the uh, each pair the or two sides do not intersect, but it is very very difficult. And I just uh, has some computer sim simulation by using Mathematica, and it shows that if we take r theta x y to these four values then it will intersect. That means it's not a very uh, good, it is, it's not a very good choice for us. I mean, since we, the point class polyhedron theorem says that each pair of size either the tangent or uh, disjoint. But if we try some other values, it shows the, uh, the two sides, the each pair of two sides that means each pair of two bisectors will disjoin. And uh, unfortunately, I cannot give some explicit, uh, explicit condition for these four values to uh, determine the isosceles outside the triangle group is discrete or not. But we can just, uh, now for the moment, we can just uh, have the compute, computer simultaneous result. And uh, uh, the last uh, uh, theorem is uh, also about uh, the isosceles ultra ideal triangle group. But it's uh, also a very special kind of isosceles ideal triangle group. And the uh, start point for me to consider this uh, isosceles ultra ideal triangle group is from the PhD thesis of this Gallifan. He considered this, also considered this ultra ideal triangle groups. And uh, now we uh, give the we give the way of how to construct this isosceles uh, ultra ideal triangle group. First, we take a chain x y chain, and uh, then consider another chain with this polar vector. Now we have two complex reflections in these two chains, C plus and C respectively. If we take the uh, another chain with the polar vector uh, is the, with this polar vector, which is the, the image of C, C plus and the action of IC. Then we also, we can, consider, we can now obtain another complex reflection in this C chain, C, uh, in this chain C minus. And then we see, assume that the, each pair of complex geodesic do not intersect in HC2. Of course, we can, uh, I mean, we should, uh, I mean, compute the, um, we should uh, um, consider the condition for the complex, complex geodesic do not intersect. And uh, 
then we consider the ultra ideal transfer group gamma generated by I plus I C and I minus we uh, stated previously in this three three chain. And now we get a theorem. This all isosceles ultra ultra ideal transfer group will always will be always discrete. And uh, the main idea is that uh, we note that uh, the this ultra ideal transfer group generated by I plus I C I minus is uh, just the um, two general subgroup I plus and uh, two general group by I plus and I C. And then we also could prove that the second group generated by I plus I C is just index of two in sub, sorry, index of two in subgroup or uh, uh, this two gender subgroup. And then we just need to consider the discreteness of the cyclic group. And it shows that this uh, element will be log syndromic always. And uh, the cyclic group generated by log syndromic, of course, it will be discrete. And uh, this is the last theorem about the isosceles ultra ideal channel group. And uh, this is the main references about the about this talk. Okay, thank you for your attention. Questions? What is the invariant of, of uh, ultra parallel um, uh, triangle? So you have t uh, three um, complex lines; they don't meet in the interior and in the boundary. Yeah. And therefore, you have positive distance each two of them. Yeah. Are these distances an invariant of the configuration? Uh, we can if consider. Have two, if you have uh, two triplets of lines hmm. with sa same distance, you can take one to the other or not? Um, yeah, I mean, the, for all triangular triangle group, the. The only invariant, I think, no? No, I, I think the space of this all triangular triangle, triangle will always one real dimensional. Uh, yeah, since we can consider the, I mean, we can consider the midpoint of the complex uh -huh. and then also three points in complex hyperbolic space, just uh, in this way, and uh, by the action of PU21, we also have one real dimension. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. This look, uh, your, your, your polyhedron look like a uh, Dirichlet. Uh, yes. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's the same construction as the Dirichlet. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, actually, yeah. For you should write it in your slides. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Actually, I mean, um, sorry. Uh, I mean, this one. Exactly. I mean, um, it's a very complicated hypersurface. Yeah, it's. I three that. Uh, Nobody understands except you. <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, it's just uh, the way of constructing the domain, but that's right. Yeah, but this one may not be the Dirichlet fundamental domain of the triangle group, so I didn't see. It's similar, but it's not. Yes, yes, the construction is similar. Yeah, yeah. very good. Oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Another one? Let's thank you. Thank you very much. Could I have a copy of your talk? Yeah, I'll call you.